Hi, today I'd like to show you how to use Tripwire Enterprise to perform NIST 800-171 compliance checking on your environment. What you're viewing on my screen is a Tripwire Enterprise dashboard. At the top of the screen, you'll notice I have trending graphs for NIST 800-171 scoring, as well as detailed test results for Linux and Windows. And in the center of the screen, I have graphs that reflect change that's occurring in my environment. On the bottom left-hand side of the screen, I have a widget that allows me to run scorecards for my various systems, as well as a widget over here that alerts me whenever a policy score threshold has crossed a specific boundary. And you'll notice here that I have two that have crossed boundaries. A boundary example would be something going from passing to failing or failing to passing. I'd like to focus on the graph at the top of the screen, the detailed, specifically the detailed test results. So let's take a look at my Windows systems. We'll work with Windows here. When I click on my Windows systems, you'll notice that the systems that were uh, tested are shown on the left-hand side of the screen. You'll also notice the number of passed tests, the number of failed tests, and my percentage compliant. If I wanted to drill down deeper, for instance, I want to look at the fact that my Windows 2012 system has 178 failed tests. Well, what are those failed tests? Click on the 178. This is going to give me a detailed report that shows all 178 failed tests. And what you're seeing here at the top of the screen is my ID for the test and the group it belongs to, etc. Very good information. And then you'll also notice here that the actual test that I'm looking for is built in an account administrator should be renamed. And um, so what this is doing is saying that the test verifies that the accounts, rename administrator account feature is defined. Okay? If you're not, and if you're failing, then we're going to provide you with remediation guidance. Remediation guidance are step-by-step -step, um, set of uh, rules that need to be taken on the endpoint in order to be able to bring this test into a compliant state. And then you'll notice if we pass further down through this report that there is a reference for online information at technet.microsoft to get more data about this policy test, and then your actual result, date and time of the failure, and you'll see here that the new administrator name is still administrator. And then we move on down to the next test, and the next test, and this will continue through, through the report until you've gone through every failed test. What's nice about this is you can take this particular report and export it to PDF and then take it to your change review board or review to determine which of these tests can be remediated, approved for remediation. And of course then you would take the steps as we show here in the remediation guidance and bring your system into a compliant state. And then of course at that point we would monitor that system continuously to allow you to make sure that it maintains that compliant state and alerts you if changes are occurring that take you out of that compliant state. So if I want less information, you'll notice there's some buttons at the top of the screen. One of them says Test Result View. Clicking on Test Result View converts my report into a spreadsheet format. And from here, I can look at the date and time of the test failed and the test that actually failed. I can scroll to the right in my report and see the element all the way over to the right that we harvested the data from to determine pass-fail. Okay? So let's take a look at something here. How about Windows fire, wire, Firewall Private Enable Firewall? If I click on the date and time, you'll notice that what we're looking at here is that the Enable Firewall equals 1 is what this test is looking for. If I click on my actual value, you'll see that there's no content. Failed. Okay, so it's not set. History, I failed this test twice. So I can look at either date and time to determine what the results were at that specific, specific date and time. Going back to the general tab, I'll take note down here that there's an element called HP Local Key Software Policies Microsoft Windows Firewall Private Profile Enable Firewall. That's the key that we harvested to determine pass fail, and it needs to be set to one. Close this. If I wanted to put a waiver on that and allow my firewall to be turned off, I will put the checkbox there, and I will click on New Waiver at the top of this specific report. And then I'll give it a name. Allow Firewall Disabled. 
Okay, and you know, normally that's not what you want to do, but this is just an example. So I'll come down here and select the test that we're dealing with, or the policy, which is NIST uh, 800 171 to Windows 2012. And then I've got the option to type a username in or select from a drop down list a user that has the rights to grant the waiver and another user which has the rights to be responsible for the waiver. And those are role based access control accounts that can be selected from a drop down list. So we'll again put a description in for this particular waiver. And I notice I made a misspelling up there. Okay, so we're going to put something such as this in there. Allow firewall to be disabled for 90 days. Okay, and um, correct my typos. And so that's a waiver. You'll see that this is all set to 90 days at the bottom of the screen. I would then click next. From here, I would add my nodes with failures. Okay, and then I would click next again and then I would click finish and that waiver would then go in place and my scoring would artificially rise but with a waiver okay so that's what this reports for that is how you actually going to run compliance checks and determine whether or not uh, you have passes and fails how to then remediate those pass and fail tests and how to add waivers uh, another aspect of this is actually in the policy manager. You'll see there's several managers up here at the top of the screen. If I wanted to configure a specific policy for a specific set of nodes, I would actually go to the policy manager. This leaves the dashboard. From here, you'll see that there's a tree on the left-hand side of the screen that shows all the policies I have loaded. Notice I have the group NIST Special Publication 800 highlighted, and on the right, the policies that apply to that specific group. So again, let's click on the Windows 2012. And when I click on that, I'm opening the actual properties of the specific policy set. You'll notice that there's a tab called Nodes. In here, I have all my Windows 2012 systems added. Actually, I have one system added. If I wanted to add more, I can click the Add button and select from a list of which systems I would like to have in this particular test. In this case, maybe it's all my Windows 2012 R2 system. So I click that group and then hit add. Okay. The other thing that I might want to do is set my scoring threshold. You'll see this is set from passing to failing, but what if I wanted to add a new one? Maybe I'm compliant um, is 90%. So maybe I put something in here called compliant and, um, and I set it to a value of 90. And I give this color of blue. So basically now, any score that comes in 0 to 89 is failing, 90 to 99 is compliant, 100 is full passing. So then I hit OK on this to put that into place. And if I wanted to run this policy test, I put a checkbox next to it and click Run from the button bar. The other way I could run this is to go into my Task Manager, where I have a group of tasks for 800 and I could actually have a scheduled task execute and check for me on a periodic basis. And that concludes our demonstration. We will have a Q&A session coming up here shortly. Thank you.